When walking into the Big Brother house, there should be one thing in common that brings every house guest together. The one thing that drives every decision, motivation, and game move. It's the desire to win. But out of 16 house guests, there will only be one winner. The journey to get to that crown, though, is a long one. There will be underdogs, power players, pawns, and everything in between. The way to win the game is to find the position that works best for you in order to survive week after week until it all comes down to the wire. But sometimes, that's not enough. Sometimes there exists a player that everyone knows will win if they get to the end, yet somehow there never seems to be an opportunity to send them home. And for many, it seemed that Xavier was that player. And if you look at it from the surface level, it'd be easy to see it as just that and move on with things. Everyone always said that if X made it to the end, he'd be unbeatable. And that's exactly what we saw. So case closed, right? Well, it may come as a surprise to some, but Xavier wasn't always the top threat to win the game. In fact, he was looking to be in a bit of trouble at times, but through some interesting circumstances and events, he found himself as the front runner when it mattered the most. So, how did Xavier get to such a position? That's what we're going to figure out today. And let me tell you, there's a lot to dig through. So, without further ado, please join me on this journey to uncover exactly how Xavier Prather won Big Brother 23. I told everyone that I'm a model and a bartender so they wouldn't find me threatening. If they found out that I'm actually a lawyer, they might view me as more of a mental threat. I think my ruse is working. Do you know what X look like? A lawyer. <laughs> oh, we could for sure be a lawyer. <laughs> Xavier came into the game as a 27-year-old attorney who also did a bit of modeling. He didn't want everyone to know that he was an attorney, though, so he told the classic lie and pretended that he was a bartender. He played college basketball, and he was very well-built, so it looked like right off the bat that he'd be a physical threat. Luckily for Xavier, literally every single guy that walked through the front door except for Big D had an abs, so it was somehow possible for Xavier to not stand out as the biggest physical threat. On night one, Xavier walked in and lost the first HOH. He was selected by Christian to be a part of the Kings team alongside Alyssa and Sarah Beth. Frenchie ended up winning the first HOH, keeping himself and the rest of the Jokers safe for the week. If I were to talk about everything that happened this first week, hell, even this first night, the video would never end. So I'll just share the important parts. Frenchie expressed interest to Whitney about bringing Xavier into the Slaughterhouse Alliance because he seemed like he'd be good at competitions. So on this first night, Frenchie talks to Xavier and it's like, hey, I want you to join this mega alliance called the Slaughterhouse. And I also want you to be in this more exclusive, smaller alliance called the Butchers, which Xavier responds with, yeah, cool, sounds good. Frenchie also made a statement saying that no woman or no person of color would touch the block this week, which was great news for Xavier as a black man. Obviously, we see that this doesn't happen, but for the first night, Xavier had done a good job of integrating himself into the house dynamics without putting himself out there too much, which is exactly what you want to do on night one. Going into day two, the plan for the week had switched from targeting Brent to targeting Christian, a member of Xavier's team. Luckily for Christian, he competed in and won the wildcard comp, which left him with safety for the week and a choice to grant one of his teammates safety as well. Christian had heard that Frenchie already promised Alyssa and Sarah Beth safety for the week, so Christian decided to give safety to Xavier. This is once again great for Xavier. He was gifted safety for the week without having to sacrifice anything, and he didn't have to display any sort of competition prowess to earn it. He basically had safety fall right into his lap week one, which is a common trend that we'll see more of throughout the season. Anyways, week one plays out with Frenchie breaking his word in nominating a woman and two people of color, switching his target about 40 times, and by the end of the week, our good pal Travis was evicted. Oh, Big handsome. Oh, Always a pleasure, buddy. See you in a Calvin Klein magazine. <laughs> During the week, though, Frenchie said that he still didn't trust Christian, but that he also didn't trust Xavier, as those two were too close that there was no way he could work with them long term. This ended up being kind of ironic, though, because at around this time, Christian wasn't trusting Xavier either and thought that he should be one of the first to be evicted from the slaughterhouse. And Alyssa, and quite frankly, many others in the house also shared a similar sentiment, because X was never talking real game with any of these players and was always just sitting in on the conversations but not contributing too much to the game talk. So Xavier actually ended up not having the best first week that he was seemingly positioned to have. But with that, I think that about covers most of what happened in week one. So moving on to week two. Oh, hold on. I forgot about one little thing. In week one, Tiffany was in the kitchen talking with Derek F. and Aza about creating an all-black alliance in the house. Xavier walked into the kitchen and expressed that he was, of course, in. It was very subtle and very much on the down low, but this was the formation of the alliance we all know as the cookout. They agreed to bring Kylan in, but it's worth noting that Hannah was not officially brought in as a member yet. She was like a satellite, slowly orbiting around the cookout until weeks later when she was finally brought in officially. I wish she was included in the first place, but hey, better late than never. 
Back to the cookout, though. In order to avoid suspicion, they agreed that they would never all be caught hanging around one another. Eventually, not quite yet, but eventually, they decided that they would try to find partners of their own outside of the cookout that the house would perceive as their person, with the intent to increase the odds that when a cookout member was targeted, their partner would be nominated alongside them, and the cookout could then send the partner home instead of the cookout member. It's the brigade but stronger, and here's why. With six members, the cookout has a lot more ground that they can cover. While yes, having more people in the alliance does make it easier for one to end up on the block, if they could just make it past a few weeks without any casualties, they'd control the numbers, and therefore have control over the house. Also, the most important reason as to why the cookout saw such success is because they all had an ingrained trust in one another that you cannot typically find when walking into the Big Brother house. They each shared something deep within them, and through this connection, they were able to form an alliance that had structure, promise, and a motivation to make sure that it worked. Most alliances formed in the first week are built on ice. It's wonderful and it looks beautiful, but without constant upkeep and maintenance, it can succumb to a collapse if any one thing goes awry. But not the cookout. They could get away with not conferring with one another for days on end. They could get away with acting seemingly suspicious at times. They could, quite frankly, do whatever they wanted, and the alliance would still work because it was built on a foundation that ended up being stronger than anything game-related. And as long as no member of the cookout forcefully took out another member, the foundation would prove to hold strong and they could get past it. The cookout worked because no matter how many selfish intentions were displayed, they worked as a group to get themselves all to the final six in order to guarantee the first black winner of a mainline season of Big Brother. But this wasn't the entire mission of the cookout right from the beginning, and it took a few weeks before that became the priority, as during this time, they were simply just looking after one another and not targeting each other. The cookout did have a rocky start, with players like Big D already not being trustworthy of Tiffany and Hannah, and Xavier expressed a similar sentiment but he told them that hopefully they could try and work together a bit longer and make it a bit further before they needed to turn on one another. It was obvious to Xavier that being a part of the cookout was a big deal for his game. If he could lock it in with this group of players, then the alliance would act as a perfect safety net. Xavier could turn his focus on getting out non-cookout members and incorporating himself into those house dynamics, and if for some reason everything went bad, he knew he had five people behind the scenes that would fight for him, and that's a huge advantage to have in the game. So wait, do we agree that this is gonna be called the cookout? Is that what we doing? Uh huh. All right, the cookout. I, I like that. that. I like that. That's what I'm really saying. That's for the culture. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The cookout. Mm hmm. So, with all of that now set in place, we can actually go into week two. Kylan won the HOH, and just like that, Xavier knew he was chillin', as Kylan was a member of the cookout. Xavier gets lucky and falls into yet another alliance. This alliance was the Kings and Queens plus Derek X, which would be called the Royal Flush, and it was created by Tiffany. This was great for Xavier, as this gave him some new allies, as well as a way to distance himself from the imploding Slaughterhouse Alliance. But once again, this kind of just fell into Xavier's lap. While Xavier did end up having better positioning in the later game, it's gotta be said that Tiffany was the mastermind of the pre-jury phase. Tiffany was setting up these alliances and keeping up the relationships necessary to make sure that these alliances were staying strong and not falling apart. Tiffany was the one that convinced Christian that it was okay to trust Xavier for the time being, and that any sense of jealousy that Christian was sensing about him and Elizabeth from Xavier was not really that true, and if it was, that it wouldn't affect Xavier's game. So, with that, Xavier was once again in a position where he was sort of in a good spot, but also treading in some risky waters, and he would need to do something soon to solidify a better position in the house if he wanted to maintain being safe, as members inside the Royal Flush were already saying that they would need to take out Xavier sooner rather than later, as he was the type of person who would just win if they got too close to the end. As for the actual week, Frenchie lost his mind, completely blew up everything that he had ever done in the game, and was evicted near unanimously. And with that, we head into week three. The HOH starts for week three, and what do you know, Xavier wins. Is false. The guy said naked, which means congratulations, Xavier. Yeah! You are the new head of household. Yeah! <laughs> This is perfect for Xavier, as this gave him an opportunity to make good with the house and try and really put himself in a better position. Because at this moment, Xavier really only had Big D and Aza solidly in his corner. Xavier knew that Whitney and Brent were the targets for the upcoming weeks, and although he wanted Whitney to go home first, as there were already two guys evicted, he knew everyone in the house wanted Brent gone, and he was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Which I do believe was the right move for him to make. X told Brent that he was going to nominate him as a pawn, which Brent saw right through, as he isn't the type of person that's a pawn. We're both intelligent men. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make much sense. I'm not as dumb as my, my body perceives. I am not pawn material, and I think everyone knows that. Numbers don't lie. People do. But 
X kept telling him that he was wrong and that he was indeed the pawn. I think at the moment that this is actually a good way for Xavier to handle the situation, as literally every single person in the house wanted Brent gone, so it didn't really matter how Brent felt because nobody was going to take anything he said with that much substance, and X makes everyone in the house happy by just nominating Brent instead of having to nominate two pawns. Xavier did upset Aza though because he was going to nominate Brittany as a pawn, and Aza was very close with her, and she'd already been nominated, so Aza pitched herself to go up in Brittany's place, which X quickly shot down. However, by nominating Brittany, Brittany made it her plan that her next target would be Xavier. And on top of that, Derek X also started going to other players, specifically the Aces team, and was trying to target Xavier. Derek X actually started getting through to some of these people, and most of the house was wanting to target Xavier's team, the Kings, the following week, which, surprise, isn't great for Xavier. Luckily for him, the cookout was there to protect him, and they were saying that people should still go after the Kings, but maybe someone like Alyssa or Sarah Beth instead of Xavier. This kind of brings up a whole thing where Xavier was in the house with a lot of smart game players, so oftentimes he didn't even have that much of an idea that he was potentially in danger because it was happening behind the scenes. Luckily for him, he had the cook out there to dampen those flames that he wasn't even aware of. It was at this time, though, that Tiffany and Kylan started to consider potentially going their own way and kind of just throwing the kinks to the wolves, including Xavier. But Tiffany then had a dream and realized that she couldn't go against the cookout and that the cookout should try as hard as they possibly could to get every member down to the final six. And that became the mission of the cookout from here on out, which you shouldn't need me to tell you is great for Xavier. But once more, this just fell into his lap without him needing to do too much. I apologize. I feel like I keep getting sidetracked with the timeline. So let me try to get back on track. Xavier is successful in getting Brent out, but he's looking like he's in some serious trouble if things don't start to go his way. So going into week four, a lot is on the line for Xavier, and he doesn't even know it. I think he's a lawyer. Derek, we're both in the cookout, okay? We grilling together, and you putting my ass on the grill. Yes, I'm a lawyer. You figured it out. Yay. Now shut the hell up. We get up. to the week four HOH, and Xavier gets a miracle thrown his way. Christian wins the HOH, and therefore, Xavier and the rest of the Kings are safe once again. Unfortunately for Xavier, Christian plans on targeting Hannah over Whitney. This isn't what X wants, as Hannah was a cookout member. So he tries to convince them that Hannah isn't that threatening, but he can't convince them to target Whitney instead. Luckily for X, Hannah seemed to be a better persuader, and Hannah tried to convince Christian that she should not be the target, and it actually worked. Hannah saved herself, and now Whitney is the target. This is good for X, but something even greater happens for him this week. Tiffany realizes that Kyland is probably in the strongest position in the entire house, and she can't let that happen. So Tiffany, who had been working very closely with Kylan, starts to try and replace Kylan in some of the dynamics that she had created in order to lessen Kylan's position. But in order to do this, she needs a replacement alliance member. Who does she choose? Hmm, who could it possibly be? Oh, I know. Xavier, of course. Once again, Xavier is put in a better position due to Tiffany's maneuvering. I know it sounds like I'm bashing Xavier's gameplay, but I don't want it to come across like that. Because A, none of this really matters. Xavier always had the cookout in his corner, and they were not going to evict him in the pre-jury stage. Although having some house guests not trusting Xavier and wanting to get him out sooner rather than later definitely isn't superb, it didn't matter. He was never actually close to being a target in any given week, and even if he somehow was the target, he never would have been sent home because the cookout was getting closer and closer to absolute control in the house, and Xavier was basically untouchable up to the point where it was too late for any of his opposition to get him out. And B, I'm simply just highlighting that Tiffany was running the show in the house dynamics at this time, and Xavier had gotten pretty lucky that he was included in a lot of these dynamics that were orchestrated by Tiffany. This isn't to say that Xavier was doing nothing, though. He had been doing a lot better socially. Christian and Alyssa were coming around to Xavier much more and were very open to making Final Four deals with him. What are you doing, man? What are you doing, dude? Stop rapper, it. rapper, Stop rapper! It. It's go time! Hold it, hold it! Stay still. Don't move. I got it, I got it, I got it. Here we go. Yeah. Xavier is also doing very well with Tiffany, which is why she felt inclined to try and replace Kylan with him in some of these alliances. However, Derek X was very skeptical about Tiffany wanting to bring Xavier in now, but without his ally's support, Derek X couldn't do anything about it and reluctantly switched his target over to Christian, which we will soon see play out very shortly. But right here, right here, is where the narrative of Xavier being the top dog of the house starts to come into fruition. Derek X starts to think that the most likely reason that Tiffany would be trying to protect Xavier is because Xavier is running the house alongside Tiffany. When X comes up in conversation with Tiffany, she always tries to deflect the conversation towards someone else. Biggest surprise alliance, X, Tiffany, 
So the narrative will eventually start to switch to Xavier being the under the radar mastermind that's running the show because of this conclusion that Derek X draws up. So keep note of this. Back to the game though, Whitney ends up getting evicted at the end of week four and we now head into week five. The week five HOH comp is endurance and it gets down to Xavier, Alyssa, and Derek X. Xavier and Alyssa made a deal with Derek X that they'll step down if they will both be safe. It's agreed upon and Derek X becomes the new head of household. Don't put me up. I'm not putting you up bro, I promise. Immediately afterwards, Xavier tries to slyly tell Derek X that the deal they made was to keep all the kings safe. But Derek X ain't no fool. He knows the deal he made, and that's the deal that he would stick by. So Xavier does end up being safe once again through this deal, but it doesn't look like that'll be enough to give him a great week. Derek X talks to everyone and realizes that for his game, he thinks his best move would be to backdoor Christian. Claire wanted Derek X to target Xavier, but Derek X said that he couldn't and that it had to be Christian. So he starts going through with that plan. Xavier doesn't realize this though, and he thinks that Sarah Beth is the target. Also at this time, Claire and Derek X are trying to play ball with Xavier, but Xavier isn't really reciprocating, which frustrates them. That's not the greatest gameplay. Anyways, Tiffany has a conversation with Xavier saying that Derek X might backdoor Christian, which Xavier then says would be a horrible idea, because if Derek X did that, he should know that Xavier would be gunning for Derek X to be evicted next. Derek X doesn't give a damn though, and he goes through with backdoor and Christian, which makes Derek X Xavier's new target for the upcoming weeks. This isn't what Xavier wanted at the moment, but I think that Christian going home was actually good for Xavier's game, as Christian was the type of player who actually could win out. So getting him out now is good for the cookout, which is in turn good for Xavier. It's now, with five players evicted, we start the jury phase, what I like to call the mid-game. It's in the mid-game that Xavier's game picks up some serious steam. He didn't have the smoothest of starts that other winners may have had, but Xavier was never an actual danger of ever going home, and the extent of Xavier's damage that he had done was only just slightly worsening his position when it got down to the last remaining players in the cookout. It didn't really matter if Xavier was an absolute social pariah or anything like that. As long as Xavier had the cookout and still had players on the outside that trusted and wanted to work with Xavier, he was in a great position and had a good shot of winning the whole game. And that's all you can hope for. And looking at the pre-jury phase as a whole, check this out. He was gifted safety week one. He was tightly aligned with the HOH week two. He was the HOH week three. His teammate won the HOH week four, which granted him safety. And he made a deal with the HOH in week five to keep him safe. Xavier is really, really good at surviving, which is exactly what you want to do. Every week, you just want to make it to the next one. And Xavier may be one of the best surviving players I've ever seen on the show, which we'll be seeing much more of later as well. And also, I can't believe I made it this far without mentioning this, Xavier's strategy was basically just to throw a lot of the comps that he played in to lower his threat level. Whether or not he actually threw every competition that he said to is up to the viewer, but I'm inclined to believe him. So most of these HOHs that he competed in, he ended up throwing, except of course the one that he won. All right, actually moving on to week six though, we have Kylan winning the HOH. Derek X and Claire tried to talk Kylan into nominating Xavier, but Kylan shut it down. Kylan wanted to target Alyssa, but Xavier was able to convince Kylan to not nominate Alyssa, at least initially. This does display that Xavier was able to reason with Kylan and he was somewhat receptive to it, which is good gameplay. Kylan was hoping to convince Xavier later on in the week that it's best for Alyssa to get evicted, but it wouldn't have ended up mattering too much as Alyssa ended up winning the veto and therefore it would have been safe regardless. Oh. Oh. I just fall and I fall hard. I am trying my hardest. I am giving it my all. <laughs> Kylan also earned a veto and decided that it would be in his best interest to take Claire off the block and nominate Brittany in her place, and Brittany would eventually be evicted. During this week, Xavier better positioned himself in the cookout by having talks with Hannah and Tiffany about Kylan being the first to go once they reach the final six, which is good for X's game. Hannah feels that the final three should be Tiffany, Xavier, and herself, which is a testament to Xavier's positioning within the cookout. Unfortunately, Xavier then said that Derek Hex had to be the next one to go, and Tiffany didn't like that. Tiffany then decided to start planning on going against Xavier and started feeding some things to Claire and Derek X so that they would be back on board with weakening Xavier's positioning. Tiffany further posted the narrative to Claire and Derek X that Xavier was the biggest jury threat and that nobody could beat him if they were next to him in the end, which, once again, this wasn't based on much but was slowly being willed into existence. By the other players constantly saying that Xavier was the biggest threat to win the game, they were actually turning that into a reality, and Xavier did become the biggest threat come final two. It's funny how that works that way, but with that, we have Brittany getting evicted and we can move on to week seven. Week seven is the unfortunate week of Derek X losing the HOH by roughly a tenth of a second to Sarah Beth. Of all the people, Sarah Beth was my last, my last, the least person in all my life that I wanted to win. I 
wanted to be HOH was Sarah Beth on the block! Sarah Beth wanted to target Xavier, but Kylan wanted to protect his ally, and he stayed up all night with Sarah Beth convincing her that she should instead target Derek X. And it worked, meaning that Xavier's good relationship with Kylan really helped him avoid a possible nomination this week. But unfortunately, Alyssa won the High Rollers competition, saved Big D from the block, but at the cost of one other house guest being nominated in his place by a random draw. Xavier had a lot of good luck in the beginning of the season, so I think it was finally time for him to low roll, and he was the unlucky soul to be selected to be nominated. No worries though, as Xavier went into the veto competition hungry for the win, and he won the veto, but it came with a price. Xavier is going to be a special third nominee the following week. Xavier figured, eh, what the heck, it doesn't really matter, it just means I'm safe this week. I disagree with this, as Xavier was almost certainly safe and in a position where Claire would go home and he stayed on the block, but now he was risking it that he would be on the block next to cookout members next week and they'd be forced to send one of their own home. But overall, Xavier felt that he could try and pull off another veto win next week to secure his safety then. I don't think it was the best move, but I do understand wanting to keep yourself safe in the given week when you have the opportunity to do so. If this works, I'll be BB broke, I'll be alone, and I could potentially see the block next week. But I'll have the golden power of veto. So, Xavier took himself off the block and Derek X went up in his place. Xavier also got a punishment of 24 hours solitary confinement right before the eviction, and Tiffany was roaring to try and flip the vote to keep Derek X in. But when Xavier went into solitary confinement, Tiffany decided she couldn't try and flip the vote because she didn't want to leave Xavier out of the plan, which is obviously great for Xavier and a testament to the aura that he was bringing. The swagadelic Derek X. By a vote of five to two, Baby D, you are evicted from the Big Brother house. After Derek X gets evicted, we get Tiffany winning the HOH, which ends up being for naught as Claire won the High Rollers competition and secretly overthrew her HOH. At this point, the cookout outnumbered everyone else 6-3, to three, and even though Claire had all the power, Tiffany was in her ear and making sure that she targeted Sarah Beth. Xavier was on the block due to his punishment, but Hannah won the veto and decided it'd be best to just save Xavier to ensure that nothing could happen to him come eviction night. So Xavier once again gets safety given to him, and he didn't even need to try that hard to get it. That's good social play, but at the same time, this is more of a pro cookout move than a pro Xavier move. But it doesn't really matter, as it just guarantees Xavier is safe. Xavier, have you been served? Sarah Beth is then evicted, but not before herself, Tiffany, and Hannah all tell Kylan that he cannot beat Xavier in the end. I repeat, they all tell Kylan that Xavier is the best player and that nobody can beat him in the end. That'll become very important soon. Going into the final eight, Tiffany wins HOH again, but this upsets Xavier greatly since he thought that everyone agreed that it was time for Claire to go home. Big D and Kylan agree with Xavier and listen to his complaints while Hannah chooses to stand up for Tiffany, but this pushes Xavier away from the women. <sighs> Tiffany is trying to go out there and make decisions and boss people around. So last time I checked, she is not my mother, Sherry, and she is not God himself. So she's not going to tell me or tell people on my team what to do. This is when Xavier really formulates his end game plan. Once the cookout gets down to six, he wants Tiffany and Hannah out first, and he wants to go to the final four with Kylan, Big D, and Aza. From there, he'll comp his way to the end. Seems like a pretty standard plan. The week plays out and Xavier is nominated for eviction next to Alyssa, but Tiffany is forced to put Claire up after Alyssa wins the veto and uses it on herself. Although Xavier is on the block, it basically wasn't even a discussion on whether or not he would be evicted and Claire stood no chance. Claire tried to tell Kylan one more time that he can't beat Xavier in the end, but this basically was the last straw that broke the camel's back. Kylan decided at this point that since everyone is telling him that he can't beat Xavier, he wants to try and prove them wrong, and he wants to bring the best player to the end. Which, since everyone has pushed this narrative that Xavier is the best player, means that Kylan now wants to take Xavier to the final two. Upon hearing this news, Xavier is like, Okay, cool, yeah, sounds good to me. He was gift-wrapped a final two deal without even needing to do much work for it. Granted, Xavier having a good relationship with Kylan definitely helped him to want to bring him to the end, so I'm going to give Xavier some credit. But for the most part, this was brought upon by others trying to make a game move as opposed to Xavier convincing Kylan himself. Xavier, have you been served? Claire is then evicted at the end of the week, which means that we're down to just one non-cookout member left. And, surprise, Final 7 is a double eviction. Hannah wins the HOH and nominates Alyssa and Xavier. The plan is that if Alyssa won the veto, the cookout would send Xavier home. Unfortunately for her, Xavier destroyed this veto, and it wasn't even close. Thank 
Congratulations, Xavier. You have won the power veto. With that, Alyssa was sent to jury and the cookout made history with each member making it down to the final six, guaranteeing that for the first time, there would be a black winner of the mainline US series. It also means that it's time for the end game to start. We did it guys. Yep. But... For the first time Sorry. ever. Once we got to the final six, I felt absolute joy at the thought that Every little African-American kid looking at the television could beam, smile, and feel that they could be a part of this too. Fun fact before we get there, if my counting is correct, it's at this time that we can officially say that Xavier was the unluckiest house guest in one specific regard. He was never drawn to play in the veto. Granted, he was only eligible for the veto draw four times as he was either HOH nominated or ineligible the other times the veto draw occurred, but I think this makes Xavier the only finalist to never have their name drawn for the veto. It's not very important, but I just wanted to mention it. So, the final six HOH begins, and Kylan ends up taking the victory for the third time this season. Kylan reaffirms his final two with Xavier before nominating Tiffany and Hannah. This is perfect for Xavier, as one of those two were almost guaranteed to go home, which was further solidified when Kylan won the veto as well and didn't use it. Tiffany, very sadly, ends up going home at the final six. And then, surprise, it's double eviction night again! Aza beats Xavier in the final five HOH and nominates Hannah and Xavier. Kylan ends up winning the veto, and he chooses to save Xavier. This is insane. Kai, are you serious right now? <laughs> Have y'all lost your mind? <laughs> This was the cookout shot to take out Xavier, who was sitting very vulnerable on the block at the final five, but Kylan chose to save him. Regardless of how much influence Xavier had on the decision, it is impressive nonetheless that he had the veto used on him so late into the game when he was so obviously the biggest threat. But with that, Hannah was evicted and we're now down to the final four. The final four HOH is basically just a free trip to finale night. So it's a great one to win. And what do you know, Xavier pulls out the win. Another fun fact for you, this was the first time all season that Xavier had beaten Kylan in a competition. Xavier keeps Big D safe and Big D is ready to take Aza out and go to the end with the boys. But Xavier steps in and says, no, we gotta take Kylan out. And he convinces Big D that this is the better move. Xavier then wins the vetoes, securing that Big D will be the sole vote to a vote. And well, you know what happens next. Oh, hello, Golden Power Vito. Have you met HOH yet? Because I think the both of you are going to make this a very fun week for me. I cast my vote to evict Kylan. Okay. It's official, Kylan. Yeah, I mean, I thought the whole, you know, Kobe thing, raising him to be a man and face challengers and stuff. Are you talking about my nephew right now? I'm asking. Keep talking about my nephew, guys. If your nephew Xavier. has nobody to look at. Okay. Kylan. Kylan. Julie's waiting on you. Kylan, I, I, I need you to leave right game. now, Kylan. Uh, no, I just, just think that's unfortunate. That he doesn't have a man. Walk. I hope you Kylan, Kylan, yes, Kylan, I need you to leave right now. Do I think that it was the best move for Xavier to take out Kylan? Many people say no, because Kylan was going to take Xavier to the end, so getting rid of Ozzy here would guarantee Xavier a spot at the final two. But I think that Kylan actually would have been difficult to beat. I do think Xavier would have beaten Kylan at the final two, but I think that Kylan has a few locked votes in the jury house. And if I were Xavier, I wouldn't want to risk that. And I take my chances on beating Aza and Big D in the final three HOH, which I mean, come on, it's likely that that was going to happen anyways. So I'm actually not opposed to Xavier taking out Kylan at this time. But with that, we see that Xavier has now snuck his way into the final three. Big D was going to take Xavier to the end if he managed to win the final HOH, so all Xavier had to do was make sure that Aza didn't win. But after Xavier won part one, Aza beat Derek F in part two, guaranteeing a showdown in part three. Whoever won part three was going to take Big D to the end and win the game. I was excited for this battle. We haven't had a part three decide the winner of the game since Big Brother 17. Aza could actually pull this out. But wait, hold on. Tell me I didn't just hear this. Big D is literally talking himself out of getting second place. Aza was hurt by some of the comments that Big D was making about her, and she, on her own, came to the decision that she would instead take Xavier to the end. Yes, you heard that right, and it was confirmed post-show. Aza was going to take Xavier to the final two. And you know what Xavier said when he heard this? Cool, yeah, sounds good. Xavier was just handed over a gift of a free Final Two deal for like the third time this season, and he didn't even put in that much work to guarantee it. He was working on Aza, of course, but he never needed to try too hard because before it got to that point, she just said, hey, I'm gonna take you. Xavier, have you been served? 
It's absolutely great for Xavier's game that he managed to keep her convinced that this is what she should do during those last few days in the house, but I mean, holy cow, Xavier has had so much good fortune headed his way because of the misplay of others, but kudos to Xavier for not being the one to misplay when others did, so he does deserve credit. It didn't end up mattering, though, as Xavier went 8 for 8 on questions during Part 3, crowning him the final head of household. He honored his final two deal with Big D and evicted Aza, solidifying the final two for the season. Xavier did fairly well with the jury questions, but come on, it didn't matter. The jury was basically laughing at Big D during this portion, and Big D wasn't doing too well with his answers, so it seemed like a lock that Xavier would win. And that's exactly what he did. By a unanimous 9-0 vote, Xavier became the winner of Big Brother 23. And Alyssa's vote goes to... Congratulations, Xavier! <laughs> you are the winner of Big Brother! Xavier is a really tough winner for me to rate, because here's the deal. Xavier's winning game is a very confusing one. I have a lot of faith in Xavier being able to get himself out of sticky situations as a player. Whether he wins a veto, or convinces someone to protect him, or whatever, I have a lot of confidence that Xavier can and will get himself out of most of those situations. However, I feel that on more than one occasion, Xavier was helped by circumstances that he didn't control. There were also times throughout the season that Xavier was completely unaware of people wanting to target him, but he got lucky that Tiffany and Kylan were there behind the scenes trying to take the target off of Xavier's back for the cookout. Xavier never had to really make any power moves throughout the season because he was always brought into plans and deals by Tiffany and others. And oftentimes, things didn't even go the way that he wanted them to. He didn't want Christian to go home when he did. He didn't want Alyssa being targeted right after Christian. But the most important thing that went favorably for Xavier, ironically, was that some of the outsiders were targeting him. They would feed information to other players trying to get Xavier to be the target by saying that he was the biggest threat to win in the end. And when that's spoken over and over and over again throughout the house, it eventually becomes the reality reality. Perception becomes reality in Big Brother. Because if everyone is saying Xavier is a threat to win, and then you get evicted and you go to jury, you're in there thinking, okay, if Xavier can make it to the end now, that'll be super impressive because everyone knew he was the biggest threat to win, and now I'll vote for him if he gets there, which is very similar to what actually happened. Also, Xavier got incredibly lucky that Kyland, one of the strongest power players of the season, wanted to go to the end against the best player, which he was convinced was Xavier because everyone was always telling him that. In short, Xavier had a lot of good fortune go his way without him needing to do too much. But for all of those reasons that I listed out, there are things that Xavier did very well in this game. Xavier had extremely good positioning. Even when players wanted to target him, he was covered on so many angles that it would have been almost impossible to evict him. I've looked through the entire season, and the only time that I think that Xavier ever had a chance of going home was at the final seven during the first double eviction, had Alyssa won the veto, Xavier potentially goes home there. But it's also possible that he has the votes of Aza, Big D, and Kyland to save him there. So it's possible that Xavier was genuinely never in danger of going home. Also, Xavier was a great competitor, especially when he needed to be. When he was put up on the block during the first double eviction, he won the veto with ease. Same thing with when he was put on the block due to the high rollers room. And when the competitions mattered the most in the end game, he won out. Congratulations, Xavier, with a perfect score of eight. You are the final head of household this season. He was vetoed off the block four times, twice on his own and twice by other players. That right there is very impressive. He was able to convince Big D to take the shot at Kyland, even though Big D wanted to bring him to the final three. And Xavier made it to the final four with everyone in the jury wanting to vote for him, and every other person in the final four was planning on bringing him to the final two given the opportunity. That's an extremely, extremely good position to be in, and I credit Xavier for that. Also, he was in the final three with Aza and Derek F. That alone is worth the win if you can get to the end against players of that caliber. No hate to them, but you know what I'm saying. And in general, I think Xavier has a lot of what it takes to be a really good Big Brother player. He can be very calm and convincing at times. He's very good at competitions. He's friendly and charismatic. And we saw that he was really good at establishing relationships with players that he was working closely with, as we saw with him and everyone else at the Final Four. We even saw a little bit of flirting from him with Aza at the end of the game to help ensure that she was going to bring him to the end. Xavier knew when to lose, and he won when he had to. All of these things prove to me that Xavier had good gameplay, and that makes me more confident in him as a player. So I don't think Xavier's a bad player, not at all. 
but I do think that we need to see more of his game before we can give him too high of a score because oftentimes we didn't get to see how he would do in a situation where someone was directly targeting him. His allies were always there diverting the target to someone else without Xavier even knowing that he was being targeted in the first place. So overall, I'm going to give Xavier a... Uh, I don't know. He was part of the cookout, which was the most successful alliance of all time, and once it got down to just cookout players left, he was in the best position by far. So with that knowledge, I think I'm going to give Xavier a 6.25, because I think Xavier is an above average player for sure, and he displayed great potential. I just need to see a bit more gameplay before I can put him as an upper echelon winner. But hey, I'd rather be a good winner than a great loser, so good on you, Xavier. I know many of you may disagree with my analysis and would want me to rank Xavier higher, but this is just the conclusion that I came to. I do think Xavier was a strong player. I just think that there were stronger players in the game, particularly in the cookout, that actively worsened their own chances to ensure that the cookout made it to the end, which benefited Xavier the most. I think that on a return, particularly on an all-winner season, which would never happen, but I think that Xavier would be poised for another deep run because I know he's capable of it. So to end this off, let's do a quick rundown of Xavier's game. The pre-jury phase was a bit rockier than Xavier himself even knew, but through his relationships and alliances, he was able to make it through pretty much unscathed. As soon as the jury stage started, Xavier's endgame plans began formulating, and his positioning was becoming something to look out for. But once that ball started rolling, it was too late for anyone to stop him. The players with the power wanted to go far with Xavier, allowing him to slip by until he turned the tables on those who protected him and took them out one by one, all the way up until the very end where Xavier became the first black winner of the mainline US series. At the end of the day, I was happy to see Xavier win. He seems like a good guy, he was there for the right reasons, and he was the best player sitting at the end. Just because he wasn't the top player of the season doesn't mean that he wasn't deserving of the win. And with that, we end this long journey. Thank you so much for watching this video. This was a really tough one to make, and it took a lot of work. So if you want to show some support, consider subscribing to the channel. We've had so much growth as a community this summer, and I'd love to see that ball continue to roll in that direction. So thank you for real. Thank you. And as always, here's a clip for you on your way out. Second place, so I can go home. <laughs> oh, I'm on one first. Just give me a second. I'm ready to go. Oh my God. Oh, we. Ah! There's a fire in here. Child's concussed out there. Everything is going wrong. I'm just stressed out right now.